Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Stefan Levera podcast, a show about Bitcoin and Austrian economics. Today, I've got an awesome guest for you. Uh, I won't spoil, but uh, uh, firstly, let's introduce the sponsors of the show. So, uh, so firstly, um, check out Swan Bitcoin, the place to buy Bitcoin. If you're in the US, this is absolutely the place you've got to get your auto stacking on. Now, disclosure, I hold a small equity stake in Swan. I'm an advisor. I've been working with the team. I think it's 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 incredible because it's so simple. Even a no-coiner could do it. You, you fund it with your US dollars from your bank account. You auto stack your Bitcoin and then you auto withdraw to your cold storage. That's exactly the pathway that the team are trying to get you to do. They want you to hold your Bitcoins and they take a focus on education. Remember, they're Bitcoin only. There's no withdrawal fees and they are way better than Coinbase in terms of recurring buy fees by 80% and they beat Cash App's fees by 57%. So set and forget, just uh, sign up swanbitcoin.com slash Levera and you'll get uh, $10 worth of BTC dropped into your account when you start stacking with Swan. And uh, next is Unchained Capital, so Bitcoin financial services. So essentially, if you are looking for ways to secure your Bitcoin, you can get a multi-signature vault set up with Unchained Capital. It's a really easy setup on the website. It's unchained-capital.com. They've got the vaults section at the top. You can use a Trezor or Ledger and then uh, set up your vault. And that's a multi-signature setup and you can distribute your keys as well. So that's uh, something everyone needs to be thinking about as we are, you know, if we're all bullish on Bitcoin, we think the price is going up. Well, you've also got to think about your security. And now also, if you need liquidity, friends don't let friends sell Bitcoin. You can put up some Bitcoin and get a collateralized loan and get US dollars without selling your Bitcoins. So uh, also remember that in that scenario, you can still hold one of three keys. So it's a really great setup. Also, Unchained Capital are offering all sorts of open source content such as Hermit and Caravan. And also on their blog, they've got an incredible series there. I really enjoyed the recent post by Drew Bansal. So go and check them out. It's unchained-capital.com. Okay, so with that said, these are the sponsors for today's episode. And I'm just going to bring in my guest. Welcome, Eric. What's up? What's up to all the people out there? Shout out to Stefan for having me on. Awesome, Eric. So, uh, look, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you you were the man on the TV screen uh, shilling Bitcoin. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you how you ended up here. Yeah, it was actually funny because I didn't think I, I kind of thought they were live, but then I was like, they're not live, and I was like, there's no way they're using that because I saw the dude cut away. And when you see it actually happening, I, I get just enough thought before he's like, Ooh, we gotta go, we gotta we gotta pan the camera off of him. <laughs> but, uh, I was at the uh, I was at the uh, you know the Black Lives Matter protest in uh, Los Angeles. We were at City Hall. Uh, I had gone to a protest earlier that week where we shut down the 101 Highway. Uh, my boy hit me up uh, that day, and he said you wanted to head out. So I was like, yeah, let's hit City Hall. Uh, and I saw the woman out there, and she asked if I wanted to say something. And uh, I thought, okay, I have a platform. Um, I have this opportunity and th this is the best thing I can say, you know, and I, I preface that with macro solution because it's not the, it's not a final solution. There's many minor details that need to be involved, but in my mind and even my protest sign, my protest sign is boycott the system uh, by Bitcoin. And so that's what that's the, was the best. That was the best thing I could say. That was, I was like, I got a platform. I got to get this message out there. We got to get a change going. And this is the nuclear option of, of boycotting. As you know, in, uh, in America, boycotting is, and in the black community, is a uh, very powerful tool that we've used several times uh, as a form of protest. And so I want to introduce this form of protest uh, to everyone at large and especially the black community. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, I, think I, I think the first reaction I had when I was watching that clip was, Wow, like how quickly you able, you were able to like pull it all together into a nice cohesive statement that uh, really just kind of in, it was like two or three sentences and then you just like, because look, for people who aren't familiar, if you're uh, presenting, there's always, th that pressure is on you. So how did you uh, deal with that? I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was nervous, um, but it's, it's that speaking truth to power, it's understanding what needs to be done and 
how it not and almost how it needs to be done. But I I knew I had to. I the thing with the thing with boycotting in, in America is we're we're actually really we we know how to fight the system and we know that fighting the system is in America and and anywhere in in our current times right now fighting you know uh, crony capitalism or vulture capitalism is how do you you know you hit them in their pocket and you know yeah I I, I you know we are under a system of oppression and you know by race by finance and by so many other subtle means and you know this is the one way this is this is one of this is this is our hammer in our toolkit to say or maybe our, our, our multi tool in our toolkit but this is a huge huge tool in our toolkit and i knew that this was the tool that i had to present with the little time i had that's incredible, man. Um, so look, let's let's back up a little bit. I want to hear your story in terms of how you got into Bitcoin. What was it about Bitcoin that appealed to you? So here, here's a funny story. So I actually got into it. Um, my boy, he has a, a, a pretty decent presence on uh, Twitter. His name is uh, Vin Armani. Um, and he got me into Bitcoin. He was, he was one of my friends who's like always on the cutting edge of technology. Like, you know, he was showing me video on phones before it came out. And, you know, even with music, he's like, this music genre is going to be big. And then he just mentioned it and with Bitcoin, like I, re I believe like 2015, he was like, dude, this is going to be huge. You got to get into this Bitcoin. And, you know, I shrugged it off. I didn't really pay attention to it. And it came back around, I think in 2017, for some reason, I just, I, I don't know, it just came across my mind and I downloaded the Coinbase app then. And I just saw the price at seven hundred dollars, and this was in yeah about like two thousand January two thousand seventeen I believe. And then I looked at the app again, and it was a thousand dollars. And I was like, "Holy shit! Like this thing's moving." So you know, I dipped my toe into the water. I put in fifty bucks. I kept reading, and then you just go into the black hole, and then you just start finding any amount of like money you can. But at the same time, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. You know, if I was going to support this thing, you know, I had to understand the technology as best as I could. And when I had the means, you know, I had to get a node up and running. You know, it, it, Nas has this statement, why shoot the breeze about it when you can be about it? And so to the extent of my capabilities, I'm about it as much as I possibly can be. Uh, uh, RIP to Vin, though. He went to the dark side. He's a he's a B-casher now. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably enough, but... Yeah, he got me into it. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I was going to say, because um, uh, as I understand, I mean, a lot of people in the libertarian world like hi him from the libertarian perspective, but not necessarily about from the Bcash uh, point of view, obviously. I'm not a, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm curious, what was it about your learning that made you decide to not go the Bcash pathway? Um, I think my unique skill set is that I have a, I'm really good at finding information. Like my dad was someone who watched the news all the time. When I was a kid, I was like, why is my dad always watching the news? But that quality is inherent in me where I'm like a news hound. And I'm really good at like hunting down and sniffing out the smartest people in the room and the best information. And I just kept coming across information and the smartest people in the room just were saying Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And the smartest devs in the room were working on Bitcoin. And it didn't take too much for me to figure out that, you know, that you probably want to hang out with the smartest people in the room on this one. So, you know, that's where I'm at. I feel like I'm with the smartest people in the room. Man, that's really clever. And I, I think it's, it's quite a difficult space as well when you're first learning about it, because there appear to be many different smart people in the room, right? And it's like, which one do you follow? Who do you who do you uh, who do you go with, if you will? Um, so, tell us a little bit about your journey then, in terms of um, learning how to set up your own Bitcoin node. I know you are a Rust by Blitz man, so I'm sure Ridzol and Open Arms and the boys will be very happy. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's just you know, being a crypto Twitter, you come across these guys and then you you hear like lightning's coming out, then lightning actually comes out and you want to get involved and you come across these dudes and they're like, look, for 250 bucks, you can be up and zipping on this whole project. And, you know, 
I found the old one terabyte hard drive. Uh, and my 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 node is so bare bones. Like I don't even have the LCD screen. I'm a, you know I'm a I'm a penny pincher. So I I don't even have the LCD screen. I just literally have the board. I use my computer to SSH in. You know, so I just I found an old one terabyte hard drive. I said, okay, I can kick down sixty bucks on a blitz. You know, and God, it was just it really if if you're just a, a tiny bit technically savvy, it's really not that hard. Like the hardest part and me setting it up was my router which didn't really make that much sense to me. But the software was criminally simple to set up. Set up. And, and, you know, Open Noms is on, uh, he's on the, the, the Telegram all day just helping people, which I don't really know why he does it. I would pull my hair out. But he's just so selfless in his ability to help the community, you know, answering the same questions. Like, he, he helped me several times. I was like, I can't get this to work. And we're, like, texting back and forth. Did you try this? Did you try that? Did you try this? You know, and it's just like, wow, like these dudes are doing like such a great job. And, you know, the, one, I can su support the community and the telegram and answering the questions I know. Two, I can hit them off with a donation. And three, I'm supporting the network. Uh, you know, like when, uh, so we're at version uh, 0.20 and Bitcoin Core, there's a script out for it already. And all you got to do is put the script and hit enter and you're updated. So these guys keep you on the cutting edge of technology. It's it's such a great community, and these guys are like it's it's just part of the whole community as a whole that's making it happen, man. And I'm just really happy to just be a part of it. Yeah, that's such a beautiful thing about the Bitcoin communities as well. So we're so for listeners who aren't familiar, Raspi Blitz is uh, a node project, and so essentially you can. Uh, quickly set up your own Bitcoin node with a Raspberry Pi. And one of the cool things with the Raspberry Blitz is it actually has a LCD screen on the on the normal standard build. Obviously, it, you don't have to do that as, as you didn't. Um, and the cool thing is that it can run some of this software for you uh, or at least script it together in a nice, easy way. So uh, tell us a little bit about what you use your Raspberry Blitz for. Uh, mainly just to right now to support the network. Um, you know, I think a lot, you know, I don't have... And, you know, to, just to be like reckless, you know, I, I don't want to put a bunch of money on there right now. So I, I, there was points of it where I had like a bunch of channels. But to be honest, you know, with my the current projects I work on, like I'm an artist as well. So I'm focusing on a documentary I'm working on at the moment. And so I don't really have the time to commit to uh, being, being a routing node, which I will eventually build up to. So I'm not a routing node. My node is basically to support uh, the Bitcoin ledger at this point and making sure the, you know, the ledger stays intact um, at that, at, at this current point. But I eventually want to build myself up to being a routing node. Yeah, that's, that's, well, I mean, look, I think that's the other thing as well that uh, we've got to be cognizant that not everyone's going to go like full all the way. Like it takes time. And for all of us, it's a progression journey. I certainly <laughs> am not perfect myself, right? I, I had to work my way up on a lot of different aspects. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, Bitcoin as a social movement, right? So I think, you, you know, I see it as a social movement and I think you obviously see it that way too. Tell us a little bit about your views on that aspect of social change and driving that change. Right. So um, we know that in the Genesis block, we, we really know what it's all about. Like, you know, the chancellor is on the brink of a second bail. And I feel like that's Satoshi saying enough's enough, you know, and Basically, we have seen that the financial institutions we have now are biased towards the rich. You know, um, the the uh, the big corporations never have to worry about getting a bailout. It's almost a given you're going to get a bailout. You know, the uh, the the citizenry, citizenry, you know, barely if ever gets a bailout, or or they get a pittance of the bailout. And as a form of social change. Um, you know, we have to become economically independent and this is our on-ramp. So, you know, my, my call to the community as a whole, including the black community was to say, Hey, like, let's get on this on-ramp. Let's, let's start studying it. Um, I actually have a three point plan. Uh, there's three points and Bitcoin is, uh, one of the first points of it, which is what I said, we're going to opt out and we're going to start buying Bitcoin. Now that doesn't mean you know, dumping your life savings into it, but it does mean first learning the technology and maybe dollar cost averaging in, you know, put in what you can, even if it's $5, just, just become comfortable with it. And then the second point of that plan is volunteering, you know, like let's get back in the community. Let's build these community bonds. 
that we have. Let's let's start meeting people. Let's start figuring out who the leaders are. If you, you know, may, and maybe you're one of the leaders yourself, but we got to start building these community bonds. We got to understand that we are each other. We have the same wants, needs, and goals. You know, we're we're a human family, and what better way to express that than into volunteering and in your community? And you know, one thing to note is that Bitcoin overall is a voluntary project. You know. So that just speaks to the power of volunteering. And so I'm a huge uh, proponent of volunteering. So first is le learn about Bitcoin, you know, buy some Bitcoin, uh, DCAN, dollar cost average N. And then my third point is, you know, let's not forget about the ballot box. Uh, that is, you know, th those, are, those are the macro tool sets, I believe that we can have uh, in this revolution that is underway. We cannot, there is no normal to go back to. There's nothing to go back to anymore. We got to move forward. So um, ballot box, volunteering, uh, Bitcoin. And I believe that's, you know, like the tri-factor of, you know, those are the macro ideas of the toolkit. And then within that toolkit, let's build these, these micro ideas. Great. And so you mentioned the ballot box. So what's your intention around that? Like what sort of changes do you see that could be driven there? It's really hard to tell, you know, because, uh, you know, you, at this point, we're trying to pick the politician that's going to, you know, beat us up the least at this point. Um, but at the same time, you know, we there are there are politicians who are out there to help us. I, you know, it, it's weird because you're, 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 it's like, can the system even change, you know? Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, let's not put Donald Trump at the head of it, you know, let's at least give us people in there who'll give us some breathing room to affect critical change. And as far as the ballot box, I'm, I'm really into local politics, you know, like join your neighborhood council, vote, vote for your neighborhood council. I, I helped my homegirl Ziba uh, with her campaign. And she's on the, our community council board, you know, and it can be as easy as starting there, like vote, you know, vote for the director of your community center, you know, but if you have an opportunity to vote, just vote, you know, don't waste it. Don't waste that. Don't waste that, uh, that tool. I like the focus on localism myself. I believe it's one of those things where you can potentially find support across the political spectrum, whether you're a progressive or a conservative or a libertarian, you you can make an argument there that moving things to a local level is just going to be better for, for whatever you are. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, find people who share your same values and try to promote those people in places where they can put those values in place. I mean, because if you're not, if, if you're not, someone else will, you know, so hopefully it's, it's your values and your, and your shared values that you want promoted uh, and, and those structures of power. Right. And I think the other way to think of it also is that if it's somebody in your local community, if they live near you, then they feel more of a connection to you and you feel more of a connection to them. Whereas if you are, so, I mean, I'm in Australia, but obviously the, the federal politicians are, you know, they're hundreds of kilometers away. Uh, and, and, and in America, it could be even, you know, it could be, well, uh, they could be very far away and they're impacting, those decisions are impacting you and your community. You'd, it, it, it's much better to kind of give more power to the local areas as opposed to the federal uh, so that you have a bit more of a say in what's going on in your community. Definitely. And, you know, that's, that, those are the politicians. You, you want the politician that lives in your neighborhood to be representing you not the politician who doesn't do their own laundry or their own dishes, you know? Yeah. And speaking of uh, police and the police system as well, there may be parallels there also, this idea of having police who are from that area um, and uh, different structures around how uh, policing could be improved. Do you have any thoughts on that? I presume you do. Uh, definitely, definitely. So um, I, I, volunteered at my local uh, recreation center. Uh, I was a basketball coach. Now, mind you, I don't know, I don't know any technicalities about basketball. So I chose the youngest kids to coach. And my goal was to make sure they had a great time, to make sure they felt supported and to make sure they felt like what it meant to be a team. And to actually, pass kids at that age, five and six, you just want them to pass the ball. <laughs> but uh, 
we had they had a program in which a local police officer would visit the community center and the kids would become acquainted with the police officer in the center and get to know him on a first name basis and i think that's the connection we need like as long as a police officer feels that he's not related to you you're not his cousin you're not his brother you're not his brother's or sister's friend then you know that it 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 makes that disconnect that much more powerful for them to maybe inflict harm upon you now we have a huge policing problem uh, in this country our um our policing is actually the foundations of it is built on slavery and slave patrols and uh, catching slaves and and supporting the status quo. Um, you know, so in the North, it was for the protection of property and goods. And in the South, it was for the, uh, you know, the monitoring of slaves and catching runaway slaves. Uh, so, uh, you know, policing the slave, the slave population. So that's why, you know, Bitcoin as a whole is a, a huge part of the tool because we essentially have to up in the status quo. And I think that falls into maybe, not even maybe, it falls into an economic dimension of this. But uh, yeah, our, our policing system in America, is, it's really, it's really bad. So, you know, but there, there are programs, there are people, you know, putting a, a foot forward uh, in that. But yeah, we, the, the micro ideas for that are, as I mentioned, I volunteered. I was in a position to meet the police officer and to have communication with that police officer as part of the program to integrate the police in the community. So we can do it. And uh, there, there are steps being taken forward in, in my community for that. Great. And so you mentioned volunteering. And so you mentioned uh, being a basketball coach for a youth team. Are there any other forms of volunteering uh, that you see that you would like to promote? Just just a ton. Um, I, I want to get back into it. I got really busy. I, that was uh, enorm an, an, a enormously uh, fulfilling experience for me. Uh, you know, you go to the grocery store and you see your kids run up to you and they're still calling you coach. Uh, it was a very fulfilling um, uh, experience for me, but I'd love to volunteer uh, in the Bitcoin community with, uh, you know, maybe contributing. I mean, that's, that's a huge far off dream, but I'd love to be able to contribute code, you know, uh, volunteering uh, my time and towards a uh, Bitcoin, maybe lightning project. And uh, in the city of Los Angeles, uh, there's a web page where you can do a myriad of, of volunteer opportunities, like just planting trees, uh, you know, being a mentor, you know, taking kids camping or hiking, you know, any of those things would be extremely fulfilling to me. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about it. And I think it, it just brings it down to what's going on in your community and what what can you do uh and i think a lot of bitcoin people see that and i think it's a fair point you make as well around um wanting to contribute to these bitcoin and lightning projects and i think the really interesting thing as well is you don't necessarily need to be some super computer genius person uh Bitcoin is for all walks of life and you know even I'm not a developer uh, you're not a developer but we're still you know doing Bitcoin stuff and kind of promoting Bitcoin so tell us a little bit about that idea uh Bitcoin being for all walks of life yeah I mean that's you know that that's one of the tenants you know it's open uh it's an open uh platform where all you need is an internet connection and you know a part of it is people who maybe not technically inclined um, can spread that message, you know? And that's that was part of me, my reason of spreading that message uh, when I was being interviewed, you know, it's, it's for all walks of life. And, you know, it's not hard to get involved. So it just takes the uh, initiative and people like me and, and you and others to just keep talking about it. So people get interested in it, I mean, you know, my family wants me to shut up about it. And I've, I've gotten my little sister into it. Uh, I've gotten my older sister into it. And she unfortunately lost her uh, 12 letter passphrase. So fingers crossed she finds it. But, uh, you know, it's it, and it's also things like that. When you talk to people about it, you realize that, like, for those who know a little bit less than you, that how it can be difficult for them. So it's also, you know, just 
figuring out ways you can help the community and get the community on board. But yeah, it's it's open. It's it's for everyone, and all you need is an internet connection and a you know a smartphone, and you can start participating and then figuring it out. Right. Uh, that reminds me of my friend Matt O'Dell's Uncle Jim. Right. You have to you have to be the Uncle Jim for your family. Yeah, yeah, friend. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely that dude. Like they just want me to, like shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric, let's hear a bit about you. Uh, I you mentioned you're an artist. Tell us a bit about what you're doing uh, in that world. Yeah, so I'm working on a documentary right now. It's called Hip Hop Philosophy. Uh, it's about a DJ in Los Angeles. Uh, his name is AC the PD. He has a show on the internet called a, a Monday Night Fresh. Uh, you can go to his webpage, Hip Hop Philosophy. Uh, that show streams live uh, California time. It usually starts around 6 p.m. Uh, his thing is that he never plays the same song twice, uh, but he, he plays music from a, a, a specific era. So it's kind of interesting how he continually finds new music. And you know, his angle for the whole thing too is that he's a community resource and he's volunteering his time to provide the hip hop community with new music because he doesn't like the watered down music that he hears on the radio or that you hear. I know in America you hear the uh, you hear the same song all day. Um, but uh, something you might you might uh, find uh, interesting is uh, my group Time Machine. Uh, back in our day, we uh, we we had the album of the week on Triple J. Uh, our <laughs> album Slow Your Roll. Uh, nice. this, is, uh, this might even be before your time because uh, we got interviewed by uh, Maya Jupiter. That's when Maya Jupiter was on the uh, radio. So this was like two thousand. 2003, 2000, oh, no, 2006, yeah, yeah. we toured Australia. 2006, we toured Australia. Uh, I think we did a club revolt in, Mel in Melbourne. Uh, there was like this 24 hour club back in the day that went on in Melbourne. So uh, we did that, we did Sydney. It was dope, man. We was out in Australia there. Yeah, man, Australia freaking rode for our album, man. So yeah, we had album of the week on Triple J. That album was Slow Your Roll. Uh, so, you know, I still do music with my friend Blake now. I'm working on a documentary. Um, and you, you can find everything, you know, on my Twitter handle, I'm the character. That's awesome, man. So, uh, what's your role in, in the, um, in the music? Like, do you help I'm produce? A writer. Or, yeah. I'm a writer. Are you a writer? I'm one of the writers for the documentary I shot and, uh, I'm, I shot it, I'm, I shot it and I'm editing it, editing the documentary now. Um, it's, it's not, it's funny. Like the, uh, the way I get into projects is like, I just think it's not going to be, you know, all like it was supposed to be a 12 minute film on an iPhone, I just thought oh, this would be a cute little project. And it like spiraled into like, you know, four years of shooting. And now I'm into like the first year of editing. But I feel like it's a, uh, it's, it's something I wanna, I want hip hop culture to have as a whole. I just feel like this story n needs to be told, you know, for, for the hip hop community to have. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your writing process. Like how do you like kind of take the ideas and put them into, you know, put them down into like your format? Like what's your process there? I like to, I'm, I'm a very beat driven listener. Like even when I listen to music, I'll hear an album a thousand times and, and then it'll dawn on me, it's like, oh my God, he said that? That's what he was saying? Cause I'm always listening to the beat. The beat is, you know, that's the foundation for me. The beat has to be in my dope. And then I'll get on board after that. But you know, the beat is just like a wave, you know? It's like, this is your wave, you catch this wave and uh, you, you know, you ride out, you got to ride out on that wave. I think, uh, in the times we are now, I think it's important for artists to have work that conveys some type of message. Um, and, and, and you don't have to, but I think, you know, if, if, if you can, if you have that ability to, you should. Um, so, you know, my, my music isn't, doesn't always revolve around uh, social change. It revolves around like parties, partying and bullshitting too. But uh, yeah, you know, just as an artist, like, you know, that's our responsibility. And for me, you know, like my boy Blake, who I'm working with now, uh, my group. So he just sends me beats, you know, and, that, and that's our friendship. It's like, hey, what do you, here's a beat, you wanna write? Yeah, I'll write to it. And you know, that's, you know, it's, it's our creative outlet now. It's not, it's not my uh, my focus right now, in the, the, the documentary and uh, in the, making that film. So I'm not like, I'm not touring or anything, you know, I'll do a show here and there, but you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, a great creative outlet uh, for me to like get some ideas out of my head and, you know, have fun with the beat. Yeah. And so on the production side on producing, how did you get involved into that? Was that just kind of being around the space and then you were like, this is a new challenge for me. I want to take that on. Yeah. I used to, um, well, for, for documentaries, I, I, 
I used, I used to make fan videos uh, using found footage. And I don't know, I, just, I was like, if I'm gonna listen to a song, like me, if I hear some, a song and I like it, I'll play it a thousand times. So I was like, if I'm gonna listen to a song a thousand times, I might as well make a music video to it. So I just started, I started out on Microsoft Movie Maker and it was just such an organic progression where it's like Microsoft Movie Maker. And then my, you know, you're in LA, so you're definitely around filmmakers. So, so you know, your boy kicks you down his old like Mac tower with a ton of like with Final Cut Pro and Adobe After Effects, you know, and then you just can you just graduate into it. And then, you know, with the documentary, my boy is a filmmaker and he was like, look, uh, why don't you like, like, let's do this for real. Let's really make this documentary. And so he's kicking me down like, you know, $3,000 worth of equipment whenever I need it. And it's kind of a no brainer at that point where if someone's going to give you $3,000 worth of equipment, damn it, I'm going to use it, you know? And that, so that's how it was super organic. It was super organic. That's cool. Um, so what's the plan then with the documentary? Like when is that coming out and everything? Man, so the documentary will probably come out the end of next year. Uh, I'm still adding it. Uh, the tentative title is hiphopphilosophy.com. Uh, there's an IG handle called Hip Hop Philosophy Movie at the moment that you can just see updates on it. But I gotta tell you, this guy, AC, he's one of a kind. Um, if you're into hip hop, you gotta check out his Monday Night Press show, uh, hiphopphilosophy.com. Uh, just look that up or Hip Hop Philosophy Radio, Monday nights from six to 10. Uh, I guarantee it's gonna be music. If you're, if you're into hip hop, you're, it's gonna be music you never heard before. And if you heard the song, you never heard that version of the song before. So the dude's a character. It's never a good time to turn the camera off. Uh, he's such a character, so. Awesome. So what era of music, like what era of hip hop is he focusing on? So more of like the 90s era, like he, he focuses like uh, late 80s to early 90s. Uh, and sorry, late 80s to, the, to 90s, so early 2000s, because our album came out, the Time Machine album came out in uh, 2004. And that's when I met him around that time. And his music kind of sits in that pocket of like, you know, very vibey, um, very very melodic you know and in instrument based yeah uh and i presume you're going to take bitcoin for it as well right <laughs> what's up oh, that, so that's my plan that's my plan it's like i'm only it's like i'm only selling it for bitcoin you know so that's you can only get it for bitcoin yeah that's the plan man you know killing it bitcoin so, uh, auction so are you looking to use a payment processor? Or are you going to do like the whole BTC pay server? Like what's your plan with that? Or you haven't, like, obviously it's, it's a while off. So, you know, you, it's a, and, and you, know, about funny, it. you never know what technology will be around. You know, it's like we have Keysend with the lightning network now, you know, like we didn't have that before. So it's like, Hey, I might just post an address, you know, key send me, key send me your lightning, key send me some lightning, you know, Bitcoin. So yeah, right. Uh, I, I suppose though, if they're buying from you, they would probably rather have the invoice though, because then they can say, "Oh, proof of payment." You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's like whatever technology's around at that moment. You know, I'll hook up. You know, but yeah. definitely, it's like I mean, then, yeah, and that's the beauty with Bitcoin. It's like, well, you know, I can set up my own payment option. You know, for this, for this, for this product I'm trying to sell. So yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. I, and I love that you're really trying to be like a like cutting edge you know use the latest thing like you're on a rust like because a lot of people they're not actually running a node they haven't like actually learned how to do this stuff i think it's i think it's really cool that you've um you know like you've gone to that level and you're actually trying to you know like you said be about it right um so with um like uh, in terms of like funding it are you looking is this like a pre-funding kind of model as well or is it just more like you're going to make it and then just sell it no, I'm just going to make it. Um, I've already made it. So I just, this is, you know, I'm just putting my own free time towards it. It's, it's a passion project. You know, I'm a creative person, you know, um, I don't, when I sit down and I'm editing, I'm just in a zone, you know, th that, that's my happy place. You know, I don't need anything except the snacks around me and, you know, putting that puzzle together. It's like, you know, those people who work on those huge, like thousand piece puzzles, like, that's what it is to me. I got this huge thousand piece puzzle and each night I sit down and I look at it and I start putting the pieces together and that's my happy place. That's my meditative sp uh, space. You know, I don't need, I don't, I don't need a financial reward for it. I just want really the hip hop community to have it. I feel like it needs, it's part of the story. It's part of the canon, you know, and it, it needs to be there for future generations and current generations to see. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be more than that. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Um, and so 
then uh in terms of like your day job and stuff like that uh what's your like kind of ma- main focus during the day uh so being you know we're in a financial crisis right now so i'm, I'm working from home but i work at a, a performance arts center uh which is cool it's kind of cool like we're, we're going through our problems uh with that space right now but you know it's just it in la you you have so many everyone's an artist in la and everyone, if you haven't made it as an artist yet, you know, you got your like side hustle job. So, you know, at the, at the performance arts theater, I, you know, that's my side hustle job. I, I do like ticketing and subscriptions uh, for them, but it's actually a really interesting place for me to be because I had no idea how powerful actual theater could be. Like, you know, I've seen one man shows that have actually, it's like, if you see a good piece of theater, you walk out of that theater a different person. I saw a show about Louis Armstrong. Uh, it was called Satchmo at the Waldorf. And the play centers around his last performance. And he's in the dressing room and he's recollecting his career. And the guy who plays Louis Armstrong plays three characters, Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong manager, and Miles Davis. And the dude never plays the trumpet once during this like 90 minute piece of work. And you're completely captivated by the whole thing. And it dawned on me, I was like, oh my God, like, oh, this is what theater is? So, you know, on that note too, it's like, I try to introduce people to theater. You got to see the show. You got to see this play. This is amazing, you know? And I didn't, as, as an artist, I didn't, I, I neglected that aspect of artistry. And so it was important in me being there to just expand my mind as to like, what artists, what art is and how powerful it could actually be. Yeah, so it's like you've got all these different passions, and really, it's just kind of you're just sharing them with them. And you know, Bitcoin is one of them, and art is another, and theater is another, and that's that's all. Uh, that's what it's all about. So, tell me, um, in terms of um, bringing you back to Bitcoin, uh, what are you more excited about over the coming year or so? Are you, is there any a particular development you're looking at that you think that would be really cool to see coming into Bitcoin? Yeah, I'm really excited about the privacy coming in. I'm excited about the focus on privacy. Um, I'm excited with the, uh, with, um, the, with lightning network. They got this, uh, I forget what it's called. Was it the LSATs? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like, LSAT. They're gonna, yeah. yeah. They're going to start using the, um, the, uh, HTML, uh, the, the HTML. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I might screw this all up, but they're going to start using the, uh, the payment protocols in HTTP, you know, um, that was neglected. I think the 402 protocol, I, I mean, I could be completely botching this, um, but that's super interesting that, you know, th- that with the Lightning Protocol is trying to integrate itself into, into the web to make, to even, to simplify payments even more, you know? So that's interesting. And then the privacy, which Nor and Taproot, that's gonna be super interesting. And, you know, I, I got this prediction, I'm, I, I could be wrong. We're almost towards the end of the year, but I really see Lightning going mainstream really soon. I really do. It's just a couple of more key innovations that need to take place. And, you know, we're gonna be, just zippity do that with this thing. I mean, I, I, I use my node, you know, I send, I send payments, I send donations, you know, I send donations to Roots and Open Noms, you know, and it's bam, you know, it's right there. It's like low fees and, you know, it's I'm using the backend software, like Ride the Lightning, you know, to make these payments. You know, Lightning Loop came out, like how sick is that? You know, and it's just, it's, it's so fun. It's just, it's that, you know, it's just, it's fun to geek out on this stuff. And at the same time, know that like you're part of a revolution. I mean, you know, how fun is that, you know? That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, RTL is a great dashboard to manage your Lightning channels with. Um, I haven't uh, done, I've done like the uh, the channel rebalancing tool on uh, RTL as well, which is really, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, there's a whole community around it and it's global, right? I mean, there's a lot of guys in like Europe and stuff and America, uh, some in Asia, like who are all working on Lightning stuff and um, trying to, find ways to do something interesting and i think um uh, when i chat with uh, rusty who's the um who's behind sea lightning and the lightning spec he's he, he the way he says it is something like you know he kind of makes this analogy back to his linux days right so every year it was going to be oh it's, this is the year of the linux desktop and like it didn't really happen that way but then if you look at what happened linux did take over just not in the way we thought it would and so it, it might be a similar thing with lightning that you know, 
people are just going to keep plugging away, plugging away, building on it, and then eventually something somewhere kind of takes off and then people start using it. And it, who knows, it could be LSAT, it could be um, people doing like this kind of online paywalls as a way to kind of uh, change the way advertising and online distribution works. Uh, there's so many different ideas around that. Do you have any ideas on what you think it could be or what you're more excited about in I, the light I mean, world? I mean, it's being used as a messaging application now. Like, you know, that we didn't, I don't, I don't know if that was in the original thoughts of it, but now we're, we're seeing it to send as, as a way to send private messaging to, to people. So, you know, what, you know, what could come out of that? That's great. You know, um, it's just, it's just, yeah, we, we, we really don't, you know, we have no idea it's just something can completely out of this world step up. Cause we're, we're so in the beginning stages of it all. Like I remember I had this modem to dial up to the internet and I had to, it was like PPP. You had to dial PPP and dial like these command lines. And then, you know, then your phone lines buzzing and crackling and then you're finally online. And I kind of feel like we're at that stage now with the technology where it's just like, you know, you're dialing again, you're still using command lines you to, you know, do stuff. If you don't have to, but you, you know, you can in that, in that backend technology. Um, and it's, it's just real exciting to be here on the, on the early phases of it. So, you know, something something's gonna come along who knows what but you know there's so many great minds working on it it's just it's really fun to play with this stuff yeah uh and i guess in terms of your experience spreading it with your family and your friends what have you found works best or doesn't work that well in terms of when you're talking about lightning with them or bitcoin in general with them i mean oddly enough money talks and it's like guys look i'm either gonna be rich or i'm gonna be poor but uh <laughs> It's like, you might want to take this bet, you know, like you might want to, this seems like a pretty safe bet. You guys might want to take it and don't come to me crying the blues, you know, when you, when, when the, when, you, when the numbers get really high and I, I warned you about this, you know, I, I'm trying to get you on before the train takes off and Hey, you know, there's a chance it won't, but there's a chance it will. And so I'm betting on being the right side of this bet. And I want you guys to be on the right side of this bet with me, you know? That's the that's the bait, you know. Like that's that's the uh, that's the uh, you know, that's the carrot. But you know, it's so much deeper um, to get people. You know, there's so much more to it. But you know, just the you know the elevator ride pitch. That's my elevator ride pitch. You know, hey, don't miss this train. You know, it's tapping into the FOMO, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't miss this train. If you're going to go in, just whatever you put in, don't even look at it for three years. Just forget you even had it, you know. Hold your own keys. Hold your own keys. Save your passwords. Write it down. Stash it. Don't eat. Just walk away. That's it. You're done. But just get in, you know. Get yourself and get in, you know. Because they're, my, my, you know, of, of my family, I'm the most technically uh, oriented one. So, you know, like, because my sister's like, uh, she just called me the other day and she said, you know, oh, I, I found my password phrase and I got two of them. And, you know, we're back on a wallet. We're entering the phrases and nothing comes up. Oh, There's no transactions, but both of the ah. both of our phrases are valid. And I'm just like, dude, I remember you writing it on a yellow sheet of paper, not a white sheet of paper. So, <laughs> you know, like people being responsible for your own money is a really new concept for a lot of people, too. So, you know, it's that it's that educational process. Um of getting them over the hump too. But yeah, that, that carrot, that dangling carrot is, hey, don't, don't miss this train. That's awesome. So look, I guess, uh, have you got any parting thoughts for everyone uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin, Lightning, social movement, anything that you'd like to- Yeah, make? just you know, my three point plan is, you know, we, I mean, look, we all saw what happened on television um, and that's just what we see. That's just what was caught on camera. Um, and we need to move forward as a society culturally and we and and we we need to do what we can so one of the the the, the nuclear option of boycotting for me is bitcoin so please learn about bitcoin and then you don't have to like put everything you have in it but start dollar cost averaging in it like understand the technology you know find resources like this podcast to educate yourself on it Two volunteer in your community in whatever way you can even if it's just an hour like it's extremely powerful in fighting this problem we have of systemic racism and inequality 
in the world. Volunteer wherever you can. And three, if you are fortunate enough to live in a society where you can vote, don't neglect that tool either. Um, you know, it's there, let's use it. And those are the, my three, that's my three point plan and moving forward. And those are macro ideas. Um, if you know micro ideas, if you're a detail guy, please let me know, bring it to the table. What can I do? How can we refine this idea down? But those are the three ideas. That's, you know, if I want anyone to get anything from this conversation, it's those three points and moving forward. Fantastic. So Eric, where can listeners find you online? Uh, just go to my Twitter handle at I am the character. Uh, and I have my links to my music there. I'll also be posting links to the hip hop documentary movie and uh, the progress I'm making on it. Excellent. So I'll uh, put those links in the show notes. And uh, thank you very much for joining me, Eric. Thank you for having me, Stefan. Thanks for uh, reaching out, man. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that that uh, interview was going to get posted. Which I was like, for sure they're cutting that, dude. I was like, they think, <laughs> they think I've lost my mind. I was like, for sure they're cutting that. But I was like, I, I got a platform. I got about thirty seconds. Hey, let's make this happen. So you know, and I'm and I'm glad the community. I'm glad the community took it well too, and and, and is appreciative of it. So thank you. Hey. Hey, man, I think you did a great job. So uh, thank you. And so listeners, check out the show. Go to stefanlevera.com. That's it from us. We'll see you in the Citadels. Thank you, guys. Peace.